What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my circle, along with my beautiful wife, Carrie. Today, we're going to talk marriage and have a recap of the first chapter of this book right here. So stay tuned, and let's have a conversation about it. Oh, I couldn't wait to share this one. Any moment, he will take you for waiting on it to walking in it. Cheers to no more surprise babies. <laughs> Regardless of what you're going through, it won't last forever. Our marriage is goals because you don't just fall into goals, you work for it. You and that's our story, and we're sticking to it. Have a blessed day, y'all. Okay, I know it takes a moment to load, uh, and so I already linked the book that we are going to be talking about today. If you were on our other live videos, you would see that we did say that we were going to do this. So, and somebody asked us to go live and do this. I was like, okay, we're doing this. <laughs> live. Yeah, live. Uh, so if you are joining us live, I want you to comment where you're from. And if you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, uh, the more comments you give us, then the more we can, you know, get better and it hypes me up, okay? <laughs> and I just want to say, I just want to put it out there, the first thing that he said in his book that I got and it was a reminder is the fact that we're not experts in marriage. We're just sharing our journey, what we've been through and some of the things that we've learned, what to do and also some of the things we've learned what not to do. So I just love the fact that he put that in the very beginning. Uh, and it's just a reminder that your marriage isn't perfect and you shouldn't strive for it to be perfect. You should strive for to have and to make progress within your marriage along with your spouse because you know we're both growing and you know we just have to be patient with who we're with who we're becoming and also be patient with who our spouse is becoming as well so yeah i just want to throw that out there we don't have to start yet baby. okay i was like oh we're starting no, i was like i was like she like to get into the comments so i just want to throw that out there for the people that we that think we're, that we think we're perfect we're not we're not experts we just love to talk about our marriage Amanda Miller says that we should start a small group. She goes, you guys have the best advice. You a know what, someday. Group. Yeah. We, we, we been, just. We've been a part of some small groups. Yes. So that's why we love to share because we love being around real people having conversations. What were you saying, babe? Like, I love small groups. I think that you, like, can collaborate and just get really good ideas off people. Yeah, I, I don't even think it's just ideas. I think it's just talking about the reality of marriage. Yeah. Going through things and having to not deal with your spouse, like learning how to communicate effectively with your spouse and understand like we went through some of the groups and it was just like talked about in the last uh, video, like simple things that you don't communicate and talk about. And those are those unspoken expectations that you have for each other. And for me, I think it's sometimes the pettiness that if you learn to talk about it, then you see how funny it is. And instead of being mad and pissed off at each other about it, you can laugh about it because it's literally the pettiness is what kills most marriages, just being honest. Or you, yeah, or even unspoken things. Yeah, unspoken expectations and realities, yeah. and just for us, we just just communicate. I think yeah. that's one of the biggest things you about the little things that you don't think that matter in marriage. Those things really do matter because it matters to you, and you are a part of that marriage. So, you ready? <laughs> okay, I want you to drop a one in the comments if you have read this book before. Hey, hey Jasmine. Jasmine. <laughs> Drop a one in the comments if you have read this book before and drop a two in the comments if you have not read it or you want to read it. So the book is, we didn't even say the name of the book. I think we just Pregnant like, yeah, this book. It's, yeah. Near. So like I said, if you're just hopping on, uh, this is our fifth time going through this book. And I think every time that we've gone through it, it's just dramatically, I would say, helped our marriage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've been through it majority of the time with other couples so yes. uh this is our first time just doing something different but we wanted to actually still invest in our marriage because we've been married seven years and for us to go through it five times that's you know five different seasons of life for us so uh it's just great to just dig back into something that you know have been effective in your marriage and also just want to share it with the people that you know may need this or people who've been asking us are like why does our marriage look the way it do and just a reminder that it's not by accident. It's about us investing in our marriage along with other people who uh, decided to invest in their marriage as well. Like she said earlier, it's about getting different ideas and things that we can implement that works for us because 
what works for us may not work for yeah, you, but you true. can take it and you can <clears throat> twist it and you can bend it and you can make it work if you think it's a like great idea or whatever the case may be. Kaylin says she's not married, but I think there's still valuable lessons yes. to learn from it. Yes. That is so true. Yes. Actually, I think we mm -hmm. had friends who were even about to get married mm -hmm. and they still got the book. And so I, I think it's a great, even a gift for somebody yep. who's just got engaged or somebody, I think it's... Now that I think about it, I'm like, I'm glad that we went. Didn't we go through marriage classes before we yeah, got married? Yeah, we did. It really should be a requirement for people. <clears throat> I know. Because there's a lot of things I think people, even today at church, like I think the honeymoon is so fantasized over or like getting to the altar is such a fantasy. And it's, the marriage happens after all of that yeah. stuff. Like after the honeymoon phase is over and all that, that's like, when the real marriage happens, and, and that's why, what was the divorce rate? 50%, I think. 50% of people that married get, get that's divorced. That's real, yeah. Yeah, and that's really sad. And <clears> so <throat> I think one of the ways that this book says is they did some studies, and prayer actually is like the number one <clears throat> thing that can change your marriage. Yeah, being open and honest. I think we pray together, like, and you pray for me sometimes, and I'm like, why she think that about me? And it's like... <laughs> It's not that she think that about me. This is what she's praying because that's what she wants to see in you. So for me, it just a lot of times don't be offended by what she's praying. It's not like she's saying something is wrong. She just see an area, a weakness or area that she see that you can use some Jesus in. So for me, I had to come to understand it and not being offended by what my wife is seeing because her perspective and viewpoint is just that. She think, see things about me that I can't see. And those are probably some weaknesses and some things that, you know, that's why God said, like, I'm going to make you a suitable helper. Like for her, she is my helpmate. She's not, you know, she's my spouse. Like I tell people all the time, marriage isn't 50, 50, it's 100, 100. So I need her just as much as she need me. So sometimes I have to tell myself, like, God gave me this beautiful woman for a reason. You don't have it all together. When she's telling you something, you have to understand, like, that means you don't know it all. And it may be wise of you to listen to what she's saying because she sees things from a different perspective. And she sees things about you that you can't see for yourself. So... Uh, I think sometimes we just have to let our guard down and just be willing to do things different if we want to see differences in our marriage. Oh, that's so good. <clears throat> I know. I just, yeah, I listen, know. I was like, oh, that's so listen, good. Do that things different. That, that wasn't even coming from the That didn't come from the book. <laughs> I gave that to y'all for free. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. I know. Okay, this is the first chapter. So we're going to come on and be doing this after every chapter. So if you haven't gotten the book, definitely there's a link in the comments. Grab the book. And we suggest doing it with your, spouse. with your spouse. Get two books. And I read the chapter by myself and I highlight. And then... I get the chapter and I highlight what sticks out to me. And then we come together and we talk about that chapter. Yeah. And then every year or whenever we redo the book, we try to take a different highlighter. Uh, different color. Yes. So you can kind of see like, oh, wow, is this still relevant to my marriage right now? Or do I need... You just... Highlight different things know, in different seasons. It, different things speak to you in different seasons. And I think there's some things that you probably didn't need to see in one season that you're going to need to see in another. Somebody talked about uh, they're not married. And for me, I tell myself all the time, just think about a tool man. He has on a belt. And anytime he comes in to do a job, he has different tools for that job. So for me, it's always about equipping yourself with the tools before you need it. Because when you get into marriage, if you're already going through this book, then you already have the tools needed to combat some of the things that you're going to go through in marriage. And I always say, like, when I think about my kids is I want to fill their moral warehouse so that when they're old, they can pull from that. So they have things already stored up. They have wisdom. They have knowledge. They have a, a true and real example of love look like. Love isn't a feeling. It's a commitment. So when they see their parents... And they see us committing to our marriage. So when they get older, they understand, like, I like this person, but am I willing to be committed to this person? And okay. understanding, like, what commitments take. So for me, it's about filling your moral warehouse, filling your warehouse up here with things and filling your tool belt with tools so that when time comes, when you need to fix something, then you have the necessary tool to fix that thing. So for me, this book is a tool. And yes. if you're going through something <laughs> in your marriage, all you have to do is pick up the tool and let this tool help you fix that thing that you think are broken or that thing that just may have a leak in it. So I think many times people get in trouble because they don't have the right tools. They're trying to come back and fix things so with good. things that, that, that don't fit the situation, the things that, that can't help in the mess situation. So for me, this is a tool that has helped us fix some leaks within our marriage. It isn't perfect, like I said, but it helps us not to just patch things up, but go in and do the repairs that's needed so that we can continue to build on our marriage and not let those same leaks keep coming back 
and uh, repeating itself. So for me, like I said, this is a tool and that's why we've been through it five times because it is a valuable tool. And if you can just continue to take these things and actually like a tool person, if you hire somebody to do a job at your house, you want them to do it right. So when we read this book, we understand like we're hiring ourselves to work yeah. on our marriage. What we want our, our, our marriage to look like, we have to invest in that thing. So for us, this is a tool. This is, is an investment for our marriage. And we know it's going to fix our marriage. Not necessarily fix because it's broken. But it's going to allow us to just prepare ourselves for things to come. Because life happens. Uh, and some of the things you can't avoid. But some of the things you can't be prepared to handle uh, when it do happen. Okay. So <clears throat> what that uh -oh. just made I know, <laughs> that just made me think about, you know, that fate, there was like a famous book writer and they had a marriage podcast oh yeah and then they ended up getting a divorce and everybody mm. was just like oh my gosh and i think that for us well i mean that was last year i think but that was like a wake up call years ago. to be like oh my gosh if you're not working on your marriage right. then you're working, working on, on your, your divorce. divorce so we like made sure we're like okay we need to do a marriage thing or whatever yeah, and so you gotta make sure that you're living out what you're talking yeah. about you're living out what you're preaching about because like i said life will come and life will test you and like i said what happened in COVID, like the preacher said today like it exposed us it exposed people in the way like yeah. this is your real reality not what you're telling people not what you're putting out on social media when you have to sit down and deal with yourself like this is your true self is going to come to the forefront. So That's for so us, good. when these things happen, you, like you said, you have to be building on a solid foundation because when that when the storms of life come, it's going to blow regardless of who you are. These were famous people, but when the storms of life came and blew, we saw really what their foundation was built on, and it caused us to pull back the seat to say, yeah. like, okay, are you really building your marriage or are you just talking about it? Are you just trying to get people excited about marriage? So for us, it's about really going in and doing the work and using the necessary tools and putting those tools to work. It's one thing to read this book. It's another thing to go and do the things that the book is telling you to do. That's when you start to see the changes in your marriage and also the changes within yourself as well. Yeah, that's so good. And make sure you guys are commenting. If you have anything to add to this, it'll help us with the discussion. <clears throat> if you have any questions, you can totally comment them too. Any takeaways? Okay, so what I find so crazy is sometimes we end up highlighting the same thing. Yeah. And so this time we did highlight the same thing. And it's, we would be the first to tell you that we know just as much as what to do as in what not to do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that speaks for itself. I don't got to preach that. Yeah. <laughs> like no marriage is perfect. We're not, we're on here because yeah. we just want to grow. And we're like, you know what? I feel like it's helped us so much that... Why don't we use our social media platform and we I can help somebody to, else? To share. People think you have to have it all together to share. Like, no, nobody has it all together. And I think that's why so many people uh, are attracted to us because we try to be real, we try to be vulnerable, and we try to be open and honest about our marriage, about just our life in general. Like, we're busy with five kids. Of course, we're not perfect. We show our twins. We show Aubrey, who always has this afro. Like, <laughs> we don't want to show people that we're always perfect and always just have her dressed up. And she's like, no, she don't like that. So for us, it's like, you have to show people the behind the scenes of what's really going on to let them know, like, hey, you can be successful and still not have it all together. But the fact that you have your priorities in order, like your marriage, raising your kids in a healthy household and doing the things necessary to continue to allow you to grow and to mature in so many great ways, then as long as those things are in the right priorities, and I think you're building on a great foundation. So for me, like, I love the fact, literally, I love the fact when you sit there and you take the time to put, like, we are not experts in marriage. Like, we know just as what, what not to do as what to do, because you're being open and vulnerable and letting people know this is a book about marriage, but we don't know everything about marriage. Take what worked for you and leave what don't. And so I, I highlighted that once again, because I think it's just so true because it's so simple. And yes. sometimes we miss the simple things. That's so true. Okay, so I love how we started off in the book and you're like, oh, this is going to be like a great marriage book. And then they just get into a complete fight in the beginning. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is some real stuff. Yeah. And so that just makes it more relatable and makes you want to continue to read. Because marriage is <clears throat> never going to look perfect. And I think that's why the wedding is so perfect. The honeymoon yeah. is so perfect. And then you have to live with somebody that's not you. because right. And everything is just not perfect. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wrote. We both highlighted that same thing i said little things ruin the great things and it was for me that's the reality to marriage you could be on the mountaintop and all of a sudden one wrong turn yeah. everything starts to snowball and go down here from there like we've had 
those, those moments. Like, I think we had one yesterday. Like, oh, it was going. Listen, <laughs> I listen. said, this is so crazy because every time you go to work on your marriage, listen, something comes up. You have let to. me tell you, we're gonna because me and him, we really don't fight. But I got pissed at him yesterday, and I never like <laughs> so. I'm telling you, when you go through marriage, <clears throat> pettiness. Okay. Let's, let's tell them what happened. No, listen. I have a <laughs> no. Like we said, we want to be real and open. Let's tell. Them. It's listen. Pettiness. It wasn't pettiness. Somebody put the definition of pettiness up. No. That okay. Was tell them petty. what happened. I don't remember. It was a mountaintop moment. We was having a great morning. We were having a great. We had just. <clears throat> My wife started. Listen, when she started cleaning, you know it's a great day. <laughs> what? I am a cleaner. No, she she was deep cleaning. When I went deep cleaning yesterday, like yeah, I'm don't, scrubbing, don't Clorox happen. bleach, everything. And what ha what had happened was she was cleaning and she was cleaning the bathroom. Or I something. was cleaning the toilet. The toilet. Because my kids, okay, comment a one if boys. you have boys, and they just don't know how to aim. Like I think my kids are like, let's aim everywhere except the toilet. You no, know, I can't teach them everything. So yeah. you got you got to learn for yourself. I was on my hands and knees. That mm. yesterday. I've been there. But what had happened was <laughs> she took a break and she came to the kitchen to wash her hands or something. Because I was trying to clean <clears throat> office room really quick because she couldn't have her tablet and she was it was just a full I was stressed out because I was cleaning. And she was cleaning her hands in the sink and the boys they took her her shake bottle that she'd been making shakes in and they emptied all the chocolate out so they could put it in the dishwasher and they left it in there and she washed her hands. I was like, um, you gonna wash that shake down the sink? And she just got pissed. <laughs> Listen, she No, I pettiness. didn't say anything. Pettiness. That was petty. Your karma was petty. What? I asked you, was you gonna wash your No, tongue? you didn't. He said it in a tone too. Hold on, so hold like on. we don't even talk about this right Tell now. Tell show the tone that I have. I don't remember. Okay, so another thing in marriage is sometimes you project things onto your spouse. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Do you ever text somebody and then they get your text and they be like, you text me and you was like, Ugh. and I'm like, how do you get all that through a text? Like, because if you have a period, that means you're mad. Like, I don't like people who just do periods and thumbs up. I hate the thumbs up. Like, somebody put the put the one. No, put the one if you hate a thumbs up. I'm like, I don't want a thumbs up. I'm like, don't thumbs up me. That means I'm pissed at you. Okay, <laughs> who gave you a thumbs oh, up? Oh, hey Teresa. No, like sometimes people will thumbs up me. I'm like, oh, pettiness. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, so that's like a perfect example. I was literally like, we don't really fight. We we just were like, oh, we don't really fight. And then all of a sudden that happened and I went off. I was pissed. We didn't really fight though. Oh, well, I was pissed. Yeah. Yeah, and normally I don't get pissed. <clears throat> like I said, the reality of marriage. You can be on the mountaintop. <laughs> one wrong turn and you're going down here pretty fast. It's hard to recover from that, but... Communication. We talked about that and we laughed oh, about it too. The so. communication part. That's why I had to tell him that I was pissed. And normally I would just not say why I was pissed and just not talk to him for three days. Yeah. So I went up and said I'm pissed at you. <laughs> because I told her to wash her chocolate down. That the is that is so out of context. So let's move <clears throat> on. <laughs> okay, what's next? Buckle your seatbelt. <laughs> yes. This is, this, I highlighted that. It says relational extremes. That means you're up here, you can go way down here super fast. It says marriage can be exciting, entertaining, humorous, exhilarating, inspiring, rewarding, and adventurous. But it can also be really, really hard. Yep, the opposite of all of that. And that's real life. Like, we're talking about it and laughing about it right now, but she wasn't laughing. It wasn't yesterday. funny at all. Like, y'all, I was, I was still laughing. Was oh, like, my gosh. Okay, <clears throat> somebody actually asked, what if, like, what if their significant other, like, their husband won't read the book with them? Um, I think you still have to read the book. For me, it's not about one or making your spouse do something. But I think if you're doing something around somebody for long enough, then eventually, and you're just talking about it, thinking out loud to yourself. I think sometimes you just have to be proactive. And if you want to do this, uh, this book, then I think you just have to do it anyway. If, if they're your spouse, I think they would sit and listen at the least. They may not want to read it, but they would sit and li listen to you or hear you. Uh, talk about these things. So for me, I think it's just about being proactive, not trying to force them to do something, but still doing it around them, just making it, making it something to like uh, a date night or whatever the case may be. Uh, whether it's, listen, 
Um, this <clears throat> doesn't take long either. Listen, it's 7.49 right now. So um, the third NFL playoff game come on pretty soon. But I'm going to sit in here and talk to my wife because her dad owes me 100 bucks from the Vikings losing today. So oh, they um, lost. like it's a football game going on today. They may want to watch it, but start out the game watching the football and then start talking about the marriage book. Use moments like that doing a, like around things that they love. Uh, to actually talk about some of these things. So I think you just got to really get creative and also just keep it simple. And like I said, at the same time, don't try to force it on those people. When I uh, first started out my personal development journey, my wife didn't force anything on me. I just started seeing uh, her with different mentality, different mindset, seeing the people that she's surrounded with. And I just got close enough to the fire that, you know, the embers start hopping off and getting on me. And I was like, I need to start growing because I don't want to get left behind. Like I need to start investing in myself. I need to start doing personal development and read these books and surrounding myself with people, like-minded people like my wife are doing. So it inspired me to step outside of my comfort zone, outside of my shell and start doing it for myself. And that's when I discovered something different about me. And it wasn't the fact that she wanted me to become something is I wanted to do it for myself. And I also wanted okay. to do it to become a better version for her because I knew she was growing and I knew she was either going to outgrow me or something else but at the same time i knew i had to do my part and i had to like i said marriage isn't 50 50 is 100 100 and all you can do is do what you're supposed to do and that's your best so that's so good you know i like this one because it's so true marriage is so challenging or because so many forces seem to be buying against, against it, it. Yeah. that's what i said i said what once you things? pick up this book or you try to start <laughs> growing i think that's with anything though when you try yeah. to start Resistance. The pastor said it today. Resistance being challenged. When you want to stretch and do something, think about a rubber band. Like I had a band here. Like it's good as long as it's right here. When I start to stretch it and grow, like I can put it around my hair and it's going to fit. But think about me trying to put this around my hair right now. It isn't going to do nothing. It's going to have to stretch and so it can fit the circumstances that it's supposed to be in. So same thing with us sometimes. Sometimes we just want to like grow and be successful and just have all these amazing things, but we want to stay like this. It's like, no, you have to grow and expand so you can like allow these things to come and be within you so that you can stretch and come up to the environment that you want to be in. Same thing with your marriage. You have to be willing to grow and to stretch. Yeah. And for us, like I said, like she was pissed off, but at the same time, it was a reminder to let us know, like you still have these little issues yeah. that you need to work on. You would have to fight a battle more than once to win it. So because we read this book five times, don't mean we are gonna argue about little petty things. Like you're still gonna talk, it's still gonna happen. But how are you gonna <laughs> respond to those things? Like, yes, she said it right away. Like I'm pissed because you said that. And like, if this was like 2015, like we still ain't talking to each other and we probably still doing the Zoom. So we've come a long way because we're talking about it and we're responding to it and reacting to it different. Like we're laughing about it right now, but you think a couple of years back, like we wouldn't be laughing to about a week from now because we see how so petty true. it was. So I think the growth just forces us to grow and understand like you have to go through things because it's going to draw you too closer together. Even though it may be petty and you don't like it in the moment, like you still going to grow because of it, because now that you see, okay, like I probably should have just watched that chocolate down myself and I ended up doing it because she didn't do it. And I knew she wasn't going to do it because she stated to me, I'm pissed that you said that because you see me wiping these toilets that your little boys keep peeing on. <laughs> Teach these boys how to aim. That's what she was saying. <laughs> she, wasn't, said. she wasn't saying that, so I'm not going to project and say that's why she was, how she was feeling. All she was saying, I'm pissed that you, that you said that when you could have just washed it down maybe. So uh, just the fact that you can't communicate. And for me, it's just us recognizing, okay, we just picked back up this book. We haven't fussed about anything <laughs> yeah. in a long time. Seriously. And all of a sudden, we're, we're arguing over something this petty. Like, that That's... lets you know, like, okay, let the battle begin. It's not me versus her. Yeah. It's us versus everything that's coming against us. So, chocolate in the sink. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wash you down myself. And I'm not going to ask my wife to do that while she cleaning up pee around these toilet rooms <laughs> anymore. So, sometimes, like I said, sometimes yeah. you just got to react. And that just comes with maturity. Like, I probably wouldn't have responded this way five years ago would have been just okay you want to be pissed off i'll be pissed off with you yeah and we'll just be going there and just walking around the house bumping into each other and not saying nothing but <laughs> that's not happening we're actually laughing about the situation right now that's so funny okay jasmine says growth helps with learning to communicate mm. and listening as well <clears throat> listening and understanding yeah understanding where that person comes from and also understanding how they feel and trying to get to that i think we did that that marriage course that one time and i thought that was the greatest advice that we got dialogue that? having a dialogue so basically 
you feel a certain way when you're in an argument or yep. you're upset about something, you have to try to get your partner to, to feel, feel that me. exact same way. Through circumstances or situations that I've been through, and I'd be like, oh. Like he could relate to. I can relate to, and it's like, oh. It's harder like than that. it looks. I know it is. So, like, let, let's try to make an example out of it. Because that is, like, listen, this changed everything for me because it's, it took my, like, it literally put me in her shoes. And so now, like, I, I probably can't feel how she feel with what she's going through. But, I, like I said, making it relatable, I'm like, oh, you feel like that? Like, yeah. oh, like. So this is a really, really good tool, you it guys. Is. This it is. It is. such a good tool. But it's kind of, it's not really easy. You have to really think about you it. You have to think about it. Let's say, like, I'm really, really excited about something. Yeah. I would say, remember when uh, you won the championship. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you guys just scored that final Touchdown. touchdown and you how did you about, feel you know, in that moment the game, excited like everything is coming to it like you're on yeah. top of the world yeah like, that's how i felt yeah oh dang yeah you was that excited yeah <laughs> that girl. so Champagne. Yeah. But you try to get them to feel how you feel, and then they're like, oh my gosh, yeah. that's how you felt? And like, then you feel differently. Like, like, just being, like when yeah. she was in the hospital and going through everything, thinking she's going to die, and how sad and depressed and all that she is, and he'd be like, you remember how you told me you felt when you lost your mom? Okay. And I'm like, oh, like, that's how you felt? Like, I know how that, I know how that feel. So, like, it's getting me to be, to relate to her through my own experiences. Like, oh, like, you start seeing that person in a totally different light. And, like I said, that right there changed everything for me because it, it made me, like, more human. And it made me feel yeah. more empathy towards somebody, like, my wife and some of the things that she was going through. Yeah, that was a, that's a really, really good tip and a really good tool. Yeah. That's a good tool yeah. to have in your tool belt. It is, it is. <laughs> Especially when you're going through things like you was pissed by that shape. Um, I know I feel better now because you said you're gonna wash it down from now. So oh, I, I feel good. It. I cleaned up. Yeah, but you never now. said sorry for saying that. But now that I'm I sorry, understand babe. where you're coming from, so that's good. You see how she threw that in there? You better say sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, babe. Yeah, but I feel better now. Man. <laughs> Listen, the truth come to light. I'm okay, alive. one thing that I highlighted every time I read this book, and it says, why are you asking me to do what I'm already doing? Pray for something dramatic, something that requires faith. Pray for something big. And we both highlighted that right. because we were talking about the word dramatic because that was like a word we're like, dramatic. Like, because a lot of times people just pray over your food. Like, God bless yeah. this food. Bless you know, like, most of them are like, Oh, let's just bless bless my family. Keep us safe. Like, they're just safe prayers. Yeah. And I am totally guilty of that. Like, I think I fall into a safer team sometimes. But I'm like, wow, we really got to start asking for something more. You know? Yeah. It's like you're saying, like, you're being dramatic about it. I think about my kids. Like, if they want something, like, babies, you know what they do? They oh get very dramatic. And all of a sudden, like, you stop everything you're doing because you want to see, or like, are you all right? Like, that's how God wants us to be sometimes. Just get dramatic, not not dramatic like our kids. Cause that's well, called, you know what? That's called attention. <laughs> that's called wanting attention, what they be doing. But, like, I'm saying that sense of, like, just being overly dramatic and you're just, like, even though they can be faking that, that is real to them. Yeah. The fact that they're true. crying out is, like, no, I really need you to come and I really need you to help me. I really need you to do this for me right now because I want it. And I think that's how God want us to pray sometimes. Just be dramatic before him. Pray for these things for your marriage. It's like somebody said, like, what if your husband don't want to read this book with you? Get dramatic about it. God, yeah. like, open up his heart. Like, don't be praying that he chained him and he do all these yeah. things. Like, don't pray these things. Pray that he may see your word in the new light. Pray that he may be surrounded by godly men who just start to pour in him and show him what a godly life look like. God, surround him with such amazing people at his workforce that, like, his communication start to change. Like, everything that he, that he brings home start to change. That he start to see you in a new light because of the great friends that you surround him, God. I wish you would just break the yoke of everything that's holding him back. I wish you just break the yoke of silence that he had to suffer within. God, just open up his heart and open up the wounds that's been uh, keeping him held captive and just let him start talking to me in a new way. So for me, that's like when you say dramatic, like talk about those things. And I think once you start to pray about those things, like you said, you start to see the changes. The one book that my wife says she don't like anymore. Because she, <laughs> I was thinking about that today. She started praying. Today. She started praying from this book and living to Absolutely me. Absolutely not. Never read the book. It's a great book. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy because he literally <laughs> talked about in the book. He was like, 
most people play just pray to just bless the cheeseburger and then you know, i think he said pray that god would use you or yeah. something really it's, dramatic it's, um, dangerous prayers oh that is a dangerous <clears throat> book dangerous prayers listen i think it was said in this book it said most people uh pray for a breakthrough but they don't want to be broken Ooh. and you have to understand that comes along with that breakthrough because you have to literally physically break through something that means Ooh, if the glass so ceiling is right here like if you want to break through that means you have to go through that glass ceiling and it's gonna hurt and you're gonna think it's gonna you're gonna bleed out but you're not you're gonna elevate to a totally different level and you're gonna be something and someone you wasn't before and you're gonna have strength and everything that you didn't have before because you have broke through that glass ceiling so many times what my wife went through like she prayed to have empathy and it took her like literally almost dying to get that empathy. And now she has have empathy for everything. Like she used to always say, like, I just don't have empathy for anything. No, and, I said I just okay. don't feel. She's I don't like feel. I don't feel deeply. <clears throat> like I do feel love and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm saying like I just everything was an excuse to me. I was like, yeah. Oh, that's an excuse. Like yeah. I just because I was so business minded and everything, which I still am. Yeah. But now I, I can I can relate. Like, I can relate a lot easier because of what I've been through. Yeah, so. man. Man, that changed her perspective. And literally, God answered that prayer because <laughs> she was praying dangerously. It's like, God, do this. And God went over and beyond what she was asking for. So. I'm not reading that book again. <laughs> It was, okay, I love so it, this is what I also said. As my prayers became more specific to God, so, so did my answers mm, from him. That's so good. Because God is ready to do kingdom level things in your home. Are you ready to ask him for them? Because well. I don't think he's just going to do it. Like he's like waiting for people to ask. And so I'm just excited because this just renewed me and being like, okay, let's stop just praying for safe things. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still going to stay in a boundary. <laughs> But I want to ask for bigger things. Like, I want to have a bigger impact. And, yeah, I haven't fully decided. But I realized that I was really playing it safe for a while. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things I highlighted just before we uh, ended, he said, pray for a more authentic marriage. And I love that because you're being totally and 100% you and true to who you are in the marriage. Like I said, don't change for your spouse. Change for you. And I think once you change... For you, you don't have to look for validation in your spouse. You have it for yourself. You don't have to look for, for joy in your spouse. You can go into the Lord and get these things yourself. So uh, for me, when I always say marriage is 100, 100, that means you have to be fully you, fully authentic to who you are in your marriage. And when you do that, your spouse is going to start seeing you in a new light. And you, you're going to become everything that she needs you to be, everything that he needs you to be. And I think that just allows them to become that same thing because they're not expecting uh, you to be anything else other than yourself. So, uh, and they're going to give you that room and that space to grow as well. So I love the fact that he's like, pray for an authentic marriage. Don't pray for a marriage like ours. Like our marriage is perfect. Like we're imperfect people. We're just working on our marriage to become and make it what we want it to be. So pray for a more authentic, authentic marriage for you, knowing you who you are and also knowing who your spouse is and just giving each other room uh, and space to grow and to become and raise your kids uh, the way that you see fit. That's so good. I was going to say, this isn't a long book to go it's through not. either. Like, I think the chat, it probably takes five to ten minutes no. to read through. And it's just, I think the key part for us is the discussion. Yeah, we so, like to get on live. We like to talk. Yeah, we, and the, <laughs> but we didn't. And I think the communication in our marriage was sucky really bad yeah. in the beginning. No, I'm saying we like to talk about the book. Our communication. No, before I was saying, none. yeah, there was not. I mean, it was minimal. But if we got in a fight, we would just not talk for 72 yeah, hours. Down. And then we wouldn't even talk about that, that after issue. that. We yeah. would just completely brush everything under the rug. And let's stuff. do a little makeup. What? So let's do a little makeup. I don't get it. You know makeup. Oh. We wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we didn't get five kids about just looking at each other. Oh, my we gosh. We had some arguments <laughs> after the shutdown. And so I would tell you, if you haven't prayed with your spouse, that what's cool about this is it has prayer starters, and then it literally has the prayer for you. Yeah, so you don't prayer, have to just yeah. like come up with your own thing, because I feel like I used to be like, I don't know how to pray. And I knew the, our father and Hail Mary, you know, because I, yeah. yeah. So this is awesome, because it's like a guideline for yeah. like a baby. Like, I'd be like, I was a baby. Yeah, you just... <laughs> Learn from there. Like a lot of these things will stick out with you and it'll stay with you. So when you're praying, like it's just gonna come back to you. So for me, it's like not 
like being a perfect prayer. Like, I don't think it's a such thing as that. I think, like I said, just being authentic and just praying from the heart. And these is, like I said, it's a pretty big starter. It's helping you to get started doing these things. And I think once you start to do these things, it becomes just a habit of nature. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of these things, like my wife was saying uh, earlier, like uh, sometimes you hear people pray and you like, I want that. Yeah. And it's not like you want that prayer. You just, the words just fit you and it fits your situation. It fits something that you want to see in your life. And so you start praying these things. So when you get around people that's praying, like literally things come to you that you want, things that you want to become, things that you want to see your wife to become. Like you start praying these things and it's more genuine and authentic, authentic to you. So for me, I love the face of starter. Like start with this if you don't know how to do it and just grow from there and just continue to grow along with your spouse. And I think once you do that and just continue to grow, like you start to see the changes, like I said earlier, that you want to see in your marriage. That's so good. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and so I like this part. It just says, are you ready to spice things up in your marriage? You know I'm ready. You <laughs> That's Listen, five time, five kids. Spice it up. <laughs> I'm playing. Listen, no. we do more than pray for our marriage. Like, we love each other. Aww. This is my dear <laughs> <wife forever. clears throat> So right, I'm going to quit joking about that with you guys. If you had <laughs> fun on this live, I want you to drop us a comment. Let us know your takeaways uh, from chapter one. And if you still haven't gotten the book, I did comment the link. Uh, that is the first comment on this video. And so go get that. Read it with your spouse. It doesn't take very long, like five to ten minutes. Uh, and then we'll be coming back soon uh, for chapter two. Chapter two. So thank you guys for watching and have a blessed night.